Hello, Paolo Synthmania. This one goes out to Stephen Anthony who asks, can you demonstrate and explain the Dr. Click and any other Garfield products you have? My old school syncing skills began with MIDI itself and SMPTE tracks on analog decks. Those analog techniques and even DIN sync were before my time. Well, Stephen, they were before my time too. I also started with MIDI, but I was starting to make music in the early to mid 80s as a teenager and I would read in the magazines about the Garfield synchronizers. I just didn't know what they were. With the years, I bought some of the machines. I learned how they were used to synchronize gear that back in the early to mid 80s wouldn't talk to each other. The Garfield synchronizers that I have are the Garfield original Dr. Click, from 1982. The Garfield Mini Duck, which is um, a slimmed down version of uh, the original Dr. Click, and uh, it's got a few less features, but it's um, rack mountable, and probably came around the same time as the Dr. Click, perhaps a little bit later. And one cool thing about this one is that it's got the uh, instructions for the use right on top of the chassis. And finally, I have uh, the Dr. Click 2, which is a later unit that came um, out after 1983 and the big difference also has MIDI in addition to all the other features that uh, the two previous units had. All these three machines pretty much do the same thing. They synchronize gear from different brands that wouldn't talk to each other. But what does this mean? Back in the early 80s, 1982, when it came out, different brands had different types of communications. For example, Roland used the DIN sync to talk to each other. So Roland would easily synchronize to other Roland machines and Oberheim would easily synchronize to their own machines with their communication protocol. And the same with Korg or Yamaha. But if you wanted to synchronize different machines, say a Roland to a Lindrum or Fairlight or Oberheim, they wouldn't synchronize. So Garfield Electronics came out with this um, Dr. Click. And the best thing I think to understand what it does is to read the introduction of the manual of the original Dr. Click. It explains it very well. The Dr. Click is all about synchronizing sequencer timing, drum machine timing, and synthesizer VCF, VCA, and VCO modulation. Since the Dr. Click is a universal synchronization tool, it will re-click tracks, built click tracks, live drum tracks, electronic drum tracks, and all of the sync codes used by Roland, Oberheim, and Lin. From any of these drive sources, the Dr. Click will provide the appropriate interface for practically every sequencer, drum machine, and synthesizer made. Since the Dr. Click will sync to click tracks, it is an invaluable tool to the film scoring end of the business. And since it will sync to a live drummer, it allows the recording artist to cut his original tracks with the real drummer's feel and then sync the computerized overdubs to his timing instead of vice versa. These two features, coupled with the device's ability to read the sync codes used by Roland, Oberheim and Lin, and provide envelope modulation, the rate of which is locked to the rhythm of the track, make it the synchronizing tool. In addition to all of this, the Dr. Click's metronome provides both beats per minute for musicians and frames per beat for filmmakers, utilizing a 0.001% crystal. So I think these a few paragraphs give a really good idea of what the Garfield Electronics original Dr. Click could do and also the machines that followed it. It could also sync other brands that are not included in these paragraphs, um, the Fairlight, um, the Synclavier, Korg, Yamaha, you name it. It's a very flexible unit. Okay, enough talking. Let's uh, listen to some examples. All right, picture yourself in 1982 and let's say you have a Roland TR-808 and a Lin, Lin drum. And you will hear from many songs of the air, it was very common back then to mix drum machines together. For example, you could have a hi-hat, rim, and clap pattern on the 808 like this. And you could have a bass drum and snare on the lean drum, such as this.
Now the problem was how to sync them. Let's take a look at the back of the units. The Roland has the DIN sync port and also has uh, trigger outs for cowbell, claps and um, accent. The Lindrum has sync in and out and trigger output. We could try going out from one of the trigger outputs from uh, the TRR-808, for example, the cowbell, to the um, sync in of the lean drum. For example, if I raise the volume of the cowbell, you can hear it gives sync every 16th note. And you would mask it by turning the volume off, but it still sends a signal out. And there you go, I have a cable from uh, the 808 to the Lindrum. And let's put the Lindrum in um, external sync mode. And let's hear what happens. It's a mess. Uh, the Lindrum operates at 48 uh, and um, the Roland didn't sync, so it's not syncing. Now let's try again, but let's wire the two machines through the Dr. Click. Let's take a look at the back of the unit. As you can see, the Dr. Click has a sync out for the Roland and then sync type. So let's hook up the 808 to this. And we will also set the sync type to input on the 808. Then we're gonna make the Lindrum the master clock and we're gonna send a sync out instead of in. So sync out from the Lindrum to the Dr. Click. And we're gonna connect the sync out from the Lindrum to this fella here, the code C in. And let's see what happens now that both drum machines are going through the Dr. Click. Let's reset the Dr. Click so it starts from, from the beginning. And let's start the Lindrum. Great success. Now we can bring a classic polysynth of the era, for example, the Jupiter 8, and uh, we can use uh, the um, cowbell signal from the TR-808 to trigger the arpeggiator on the Jupiter 8 instead of uh, using it with the Lin drum, because we saw that doesn't work. And um, so right now I have a cable that goes from uh, the cowbell output to the input of uh, the arpeggiator of the Jupiter 8. And so now when we start the Lindrum, the 808 will follow, but also the arpeggiator on the Jupiter 8, as this.
We can then set up a split on the Jupiter 8 with a brassy lead sound and uh, play the melody like this. And now let's put it all together. We just scratched the surface of what the Garfield clicks can do, but this is all the time I have tonight. So Steven, I hope this was helpful to you and thank you everybody as always for watching. I'll see you at the next video.